and uh, the release is going to be made by this amazing record label, Universal India. Everybody's heard of Universal India. Everybody's heard of Universal Music. And uh, Universal Music, one of the top labels in the world. In fact, the top label, right? Yeah. <laughs> Universal Music is the top label in the world and they're going to be releasing it internationally so through their global footprint they're going to ensure that this anthem gets heard everywhere and the, uh, the beauty of this is that Universal and me we've been uh, I mean that uh, uh, they've sort of I mean I've sort of made my home Universal Music for the last couple of months and you're going to be hearing a lot of announcements of work that we're going to be doing together in the coming weeks but nevertheless this particular anthem uh, I've not even signed a contract with them, you know, that is the comfort level that we have and that is how much of passion that Universal Music has for our Indian National Anthem and for showcasing something for India. Uh, also, this, uh, this anthem is going to be completely non-commercial, so anybody can use the anthem for whatever purposes you want, without any need for royalty or whatever, anybody can use it however you want, and it's basically a gift to the nation, and that's how Universal is going to be releasing it, so I think a big round of applause to Universal Music. And we have the yeah. MD of Universal Music over here, Shanajit. So Shanajit would like to say a few words. And the best part is that even he's from Odisha. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, like, like the first few words, like when Ricky had mentioned this album, like this this particular thing, a few days back to us, and he said, "Would you be interested?" He said, "We'd be delighted." Uh, this is a three-time Grammy-winning artist. Like, I think it's a proud moment for us. I think we are. Yes, we are the number one world's company, but we are. First, we keep artist front and center. This is something that he has made, the national anthem, in his unique perspective using some of the biggest living legends of Indian classical industry, music industry, and the 14,000 little kids that has come courtesy Dr. Samantha. I think, thank you for that. You are doing an incredible stuff for the state and the people and the kids. And we take uh, cognizance of the fact music is actually it ensures that it brings people together. And there's a powerful testament to the power of music. And this particular creative output that Ricky Cave has made will ensure it pays homage to the spirit and diversity of our country. This, this particular unit is going to go live at 5 o'clock on 14th of August. And I urge all of you to share, like, and spread this unique power of love. Sir, how was your experience working with the legends, if you can share something about that also? Sure. Uh, so basically, as I had mentioned, uh, there was not much work that I had to do uh, when uh, I was working with the legends. And also, I've always noticed this through my career in the music industry for the last 20, my professional career in the music industry for the last 25, 24, 25 years now, that uh, people who are legends and people who are extremely good at what they do, they do not have an ego problem. You know? uh -huh. Because people say that, how is it dealing with this artist? How is it dealing with that artist? So the thing is that uh, none of these people had even the slightest hint of an ego problem or whatever. But anyway, for me, it's always been that whenever I go into a studio, I try not, uh, especially when it is an artist of their caliber, I try not to go very planned into a studio. I go with the basic framework of what I want to achieve right at the end of it. And then what I do is that I let the musician uh, perform and record in their own style so that they take the, uh, so they, they take the composition and they take the music to a whole new level, a level which I myself in my primitive brain cannot imagine. And that's exactly what happened over here when uh, uh, Pandit Hariprasad Churasiya came in and he started playing the flute. There was no possible direction that I could give him because he had already exceeded my expectations of what this recording was going to sound like. And I already had very high expectations with him. It's the same with, uh, uh, with uh, Rahul Sharma. When Rahul walked in, it's the first time I ever met him. First time I recorded with him. And same thing, he just uh, uh, set up his santur, we set up the microphones, he started recording. And the first few notes itself, I realized that, wow, this is magic. You know, this is pure magic. And, uh, you know, and uh, the more direction I give to these artists, with every direction I give these artists, the worse the track will become, you know. So that is how it is, you know. Like, so basically, I should just keep my mouth shut and let them do whatever they are doing and let me just capture everything. So my purpose is just to capture everything that they're doing and then later on post produce it. That is what my job was to do with this thing. Hello? Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. You made us proud by doing this. 
and I've been using Nankida book of world record. Thank you. So my question is, uh, you dealt with all the legends. That was okay. I can say easy job for you. But what about the kids? Fourteen thousand kids. How it you did and what things came in your way? Like what all the things you have faced because they all, they all are like students. So the thing is that uh, recording with the kids and getting the kids to sing whatever I needed them to sing, that was the very simple part. Because the kids are amazing, they're very, very disciplined, and they're very, uh, very enthusiastic. So there, there was absolutely no problem. The problem was the planning, the logistics, setting up that stage, because if you saw that image, we had like a cross-shaped stage. So because there were 14,000 of them. So how do I stay as close to as many of the kids at the same time as possible? So the way to do it was to build a stage which was in the shape of a cross so I could walk like, you know, in between the kids and like, you know, and I could give them instruction and, you know, and I could be as close to them as possible. So that was one thing. Second thing is that it was raining on the day. So that was a, uh, like in the national anthem video and I'm going to play it back again. You'll notice that there were some rain drops in the video simply because it was raining on the day. But the kids, they were extremely enthusiastic and they just braved it through the rain and they recorded uh, the national anthem. And the thing about recording the national anthem is that you cannot sit down in a relaxed manner and, you know, and, and uh, sing it and record. Every time you're recording the national anthem, you have to be standing up straight, at attention. So if it was any other song, we could have just got the kids to sit down in a relaxed way and like, you know, and, uh, and sing it. But in this case, that was not the case. And the kids also did not want to be relaxed. They wanted to be standing at attention and as steadfast as possible and it's a testimony to the education that is available in KISS, you know, in Kalika Institute of Social Sciences. Uh, you know, the education is such high quality that, you know, the kids are so disciplined, they are so enthusiastic and they, are, uh, and they want to give their best to everything that they possibly can do. Uh, and that's what I saw in over here. So yeah, so the logistical parts were the, were the difficult things and the planning and figuring out how we're going to do this, how we're going to do that because nobody's ever recorded 14,000 people before. Nobody's ever done a singing lesson for 14,000 people before. People have only done less than half of that or even much lesser than that. So all of this was completely new things that we had to figure out and we had to figure out new uh, methods of actually carrying this out and that was the difficult part. But the kids were not at all difficult. That was the easiest part. I want to know, uh, uh, talk about uh, Samantha, sir. So sir, you want to know the collaboration with uh, sir that you did it and first of all, very great job you are doing that, you know, uh, Odisha uh, giving all the tribals all the education free of work. So how came in your mind to support or whatever you can say collaboration? You see, so, I have already told that Mr. Vicky KG is associated with our all works, activities, kit, kiss, myself for the last so many years. He has already told he visits our place several times. So he has become a family member. And we all know, we all are great fan of Ricky Kage. The three time Grammy awardee, great celebrity, music composer, Ricky Kage. So our children are very much enthusiastic and interested to participate in this program under his leadership. So that has happened. As he has already told, we have been 40,000 children, we have been there just like that one. They are very disciplined, very nice. They are getting decent life with quality education and everything in one place from standard one to doctoral program. That's why I told this is school, college and university. So as many children are very much interested and Vicky Kaji leadership itself speaks a lot of things. As he has told already, I was there present, how it was raining, just drilling. So it was raining slightly, but children are very calm and quiet in this that's why it is possible and he has got many good things. It is fifth time Guinness World World Record and many good things, UN status, UNESCO International Literacy Prize and now 15 students from both Kit and Kiss participating in the Paris Olympic now going on. So we are too good in many aspects which has attracted Vicky Cage to shoot this national anthem of India for this season with these children. Thank you. Uh, hi. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you here from Beyond Bollywood. Uh, firstly, congratulations. Unfortunately, I couldn't come in time to watch the video, but I will catch it on YouTube. We're going to play it again. Uh, so I just had one question. Obviously, when you, uh, any composer, any singer decides to uh, 
to a rendition of the national anthem. Uh, are there kind of certain protocols laid out by the government which uh, has to be followed? Uh, can you talk about that? And also, I don't know when you do that, do you also encounter a certain bureaucracy? So there are no guidelines laid down by the government, but uh, the constitution says that the portion of the national anthem, starting from Janagana Mana till Jaya, till the last Jaya, uh, it has to be 52 seconds. So that is uh, that is something that is in the constitution. But it's not a hard and fast rule. You can interpret it in your own way. Like for example, there have been versions which have stretched it, made it longer, and it, uh, you know, and there are versions which are one minute and twenty seconds and one minute and thirty seconds. But the thing is that uh, the constitution has mentioned fifty-two seconds for a reason. That uh, when you are asking people to stand up, you uh, you know you cannot test people's patience. You know, so the thing is that so if you make it within fifty-two seconds, number one is that people will stand up for the right amount of time. Second thing is that the national anthem has to be of a certain speed to sound like an anthem. You know, because if you stretch it very long, then it becomes like a very emotional song or whatever, you know. But if it's an anthem, it has to be of a certain speed. So if you do the whole thing in 52 seconds, then it will be of the correct speed where it sounds like an anthem. So that is something that I followed very strongly. Of course, there is an introduction to the anthem. Like right now, there is uh, there's music, and you'll see it right now, that uh, there's music as an intro, and it leads into the national anthem. So that is about 40, 45 seconds I've done that. And then the anthem. And the reason why I've put that introduction is that it sounds good to lead into the national anthem with some, you know, background music-ish kind of stuff. And at the same time, it gives people enough time to understand that the anthem is going to start and it gives enough time for people to stand up. So that is the idea. But there are no hard and fast rules about it. But we, as citizens, it is our fundamental duties to respect the national anthem in the best possible way. So it is my duty that if I'm making a version of the national anthem, I have to present that version and create that version with utmost respect to the national anthem, and uh, to ensure that uh, that you know that it uh, uh, to ensure that it is loved by the country and it serves its purpose of bringing everybody together. Uh, just a uh, second question. Uh, you are someone who is obviously based out of India, and I can't recall the, recall the exact time, uh, but it might be like more than a decade ago where. Uh, you know, the government had uh, stipulated of playing of national anthems in cinema halls. So back then, obviously, there was a uh, you know, difference of opinion. Uh, as someone obviously who is based outside, outside of India and who experiences a uh, different thing while uh, entering a cinema hall in the US. Uh, so I just wanted your perspective on this whole thing. I'm actually based in India. I'm based in Bangalore. Oh, yeah. So that's of course I travel a lot, but my home is Bangalore, and I always say this that. Uh, uh, even though I travel a lot, uh, my home has been Bangalore for the last uh, now how many years? 38 years. So I've lived, I've been educated in India, I've been educated in Bangalore. Everything has been in Bangalore. And now that I travel a lot, people ask me that are you based abroad? Then I'm like, no, my dogs are in uh, in my home in Bangalore. And you can travel with your family everywhere, but where your dogs are, that is where your home is. You know. So my dogs are in Bangalore, so that is my home. So anyway, so but to answer your question, I'll answer it anyway. I feel that uh, the national anthem in cinema is a good idea. Uh, simply because I believe that uh, you know uh, the national anthem, especially like all over the world, national anthems come with a certain degree of controversy. Some people say that you know we like it. Some people say we don't like it. Some people say that you know it's uh, we should change the national anthem. Some countries barely have a national anthem. Some countries have national anthem in multiple languages and they're not sure which one's the official one. In India, the national anthem is a zero controversy uh, piece of music where. Uh, as soon as you listen to the first few notes of the national anthem, you immediately are uh, compelled to stand up, or you're in, like that is if you can physically stand up, you're compelled to stand up, and you're compelled to uh, uh, to respect the national anthem. And not only that, it also evokes a sense of pride of our country and a pride of our belonging. So I believe that it's a very very powerful tune, and it's it's good to be reminded of that. Uh, you know, especially if you're going to an entertainment venue, I think it's good to be reminded of that and. The best place to play the national anthem is a theater because if you're playing it, let's say on radio, you do not know how people are listening to it, you know? Because people could be listening to it in the car and you can't stand up in a car, right? And uh, people could be listening to it when they are in the shower or people could be listening to it, you know, while, uh, while they're relaxing or when they're extremely tired or whatever. But in a movie theater, it is a captive audience. It is an audience which is, all of them are facing one particular screen. Um, everybody are assembled over there, uh, you know, and. Uh, uh, usually nobody is sleepy before the movie starts. Yeah. So basically everything is absolutely apt for the playback of a national anthem and the sound system is amazing. 
so you've got a great sound system, you've got a great screen, so everything is absolutely apt for you to play the national anthem and it's the best place to inspire people to remember that they have a country to serve. Uh, just one last thing, you know, all these years of my life, you know, starting from school, uh, we all have obviously, uh, you know, sung the national anthem, but uh, I don't know how many of us uh, have bothered really to check, uh, you know, the values behind it and the meaning. So do you think is there a need, because the language is such which obviously we don't use in our day-to-day -day life now, and is there a need for, uh, you know, uh, us uh, to understand each and every word uh, behind the national The very anthem. fact that I've created an instrumental version of our national anthem shows that, you know, that you just need the feel of the national anthem. You actually don't need to go into every single nitty-gritty of every single word and all of that. Even though it is, it, I think it is, it, it adds a lot of value if you do that. I think it adds a lot of value if you know the meaning and if you get into the meaning of everything, which I have done. But uh, the thing is that even if you do not, just the melody of it is good enough for you to evoke a sense of gratitude towards your country and a sense of duty towards your country. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, hi, Rick. Congratulations for this, first of all. This looks absolutely marvelous. Thank you. And um, my question to you is that this is so endearing and this is so nice to, you know, firstly, I would like to tell everybody that, you know, freedom did not come for free. So, and making such a beautiful uh, radiation of National Anthem, when did this idea come into your mind that I'll get all the legends all together and I'm going to have 14,000 kids singing it? When did this idea come into your head? So as this I, is amazing. I mentioned to you earlier about the whole story about how it came across that, you know, that, uh, so I just uh, repeat it in bullet points. So last year I done the orchestral version and then uh, this year I decided that, you know, that uh, or after listening to that multiple times that we have to get the Indian soul into it. So that is the reason why we got the best musicians in India to be a part of this. And then after that, you know, inspired by the Institute because I visited the Institute that is Kalina Institute of Social Sciences so many times that it just inspired me that I have to do something with the kids over here. I have to do a music class and then, you know, that has to culminate in them recording the national anthem. And uh, that's how it was, you know, so uh, basically that. So it was, it, it wasn't like a sudden aha moment where I thought we have to do all of this. It was a slow progression and it was a slow evolution into becoming what it is right now. Hello, hello. Uh, my question is to you that, because you have worked with all the living legends of Indian classical music. But only legends for particular space they or Sathe Sat on a Chodha Hazar but you could be space they know or fifty two second me score up of it. Correct, that was a challenge for sure. Yeah. So <laughs> so now when it came to the legends, I'll start with that. All the legends played the whole song. So when I went to uh, Pandit Hariprasad Chaurasa, he played the whole song. Same thing with Rakesh ji, same thing with Aman and Ayan ji, same thing with uh, Jayanti ji, everybody played the whole song. And then what happens is that uh, I had to sit down in the studio and of course the children, they are singing in the background throughout. Okay, that, that you have recorded on that live performance? On the live, yeah, whatever you, whatever you see the visuals, that was the recording of it. Okay. So that was, uh, so, so children are, uh, are singing throughout that we recorded in the stadium. So that was not a challenge because they were singing throughout and I had to, you know, score the parts. I had to figure out what notes they're going to be singing at what point in time. Now, when it came to the, uh, when it came to the legendary musicians, so we had all of them record the whole anthem. Then I sat in my studio and I selected which parts are sounding good where. And just on the base, basis of the sound, I did that. But uh, to answer your question properly, on the 20th or the 25th, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be releasing videos individual videos of each artist. So we're going to be releasing a video with Pandit Hariprasa Chaurasa playing the whole national anthem. Then we're going to be releasing a video of, uh, uh, of uh, Aman and Ayanji uh, performing the whole national anthem. So each of these legends that you see, there's going to be a different version with each of them. So you'll be able to hear them rather than playing that one small part, you'll be hearing them playing the entire anthem. Mr. Ricky, uh, talking about legends, you know, can we expect, uh, to your left, sir, yeah. uh, can we expect the uh, next year. <laughs> more and more legends, you know, also you can connect Bollywood or Hollywood because you are you, you, you are doing good things in, yeah. in, in, in abroad and now in India also. So can we accept that kind of thing, especially for all the audience over here? Like what do you mean? A collaboration with the legends. I mean, not just uh, singers, musicians, but you know, actors coming along. Uh, in the 90s, we used to see this thing on the TV uh, that everyone is coming together, all the legends in the and then they are doing something. Yeah. So I guess, uh, it, 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 
it will have to it will have to evolve you know that is the whole thing you know because right now it's difficult to answer that question like a, like a uh, like for example mile sur mera tumhara i was i grew up listening to that particular song and that song every time it starts playing i get very emotional when i watch it but then you know in today's time i mean this i may be saying something very controversial but in today's time do you think something like that will work you know because people just don't have any patience anymore uh, you know and uh, Yeah, people want instant gratification. People want things to fit into a reel, and having a song which is about eight or nine minutes old, uh, eight or nine minutes long. I'll give you an example. My assistant at my studio is—I'm not going to name him—but a 23-year-old person. So I was giving him some references for music, and I told him that you know you remember Mere Sur Mera Tumhara, and he had no idea what that song was. So the thing is that the younger generation is not sensitized to that music because they listen to a different kind of music and a different style of music. So I guess uh, short form content is what uh, people are consuming right now. So a song which is so long and um, you know and and also the things that people are getting overly sensitized uh, to. I mean overly there's over uh, uh, I would say over sensitization to certain things. Like for example, Mile Sur Mera Tumara is in my opinion is very representative. But uh, what will happen in today's time is that somebody will get up and say that oh my region is not represented or my language is not represented. Why do you have that language? you know so that's another problem today you know that people will always find fault with something that has been created with the best of intentions so that is why it's a very difficult uh, it's a very difficult question that you've asked me so i'm just keeping my mind out right now and i'm just trying to make sense of what i'm saying but but i'm saying that mile sur mera tumhara in today's time would be a very very difficult uh, uh, thing to do sure sure since this is an Guinness Book of World Record or we have uh, heard it uh, will this uh, uh, song of yours or piece, whatever piece of yours will it play in government uh, like you know channels and all because this is something to be uh, reach which we are looking at like you know in one, one to forty crores of people so how you are planning to reach those people so as of now uh, the idea is is that uh, we are giving it free for all nobody requires any permissions to use it at an event and all of that so the previous version that i did last year that is the orchestral version a lot of schools and universities took it up across india and they used to play it for their regular assemblies and they used to play it for you know the regular events and things like that and also since ours is the constitutional version of like you know 52 seconds so it works really well for us that you know that people will uh, you know people will end up uh, uh, you know uh, using the using the song so i don't have an answer to your question but i'm hoping that what you are asking happens you know that as many people uh, we want to encourage as many people to use this version of the national anthem as their version of the national anthem but more importantly for the members of the press um, if you can encourage everybody for their uh, during on independence day everybody puts out a message for happy independence day so if they can use this uh, video as their message for happy independence day we would be very grateful so if you can encourage as many people because anyway it's coming out on at 5 pm one day before independence day so if you can encourage as many people to use this as their message for independence day on whatsapp or on uh, on social media on twitter on instagram then that would be great what what next what <laughs> next no just concentrating on this right now <laughs> thank you so much and lastly i wanted to tell you very very important now you saw this version of the national anthem over here now we've got a virtual reality version of it where you know you have you put on your goggles and you know and then you can get really close to pandit hari prasad chaurasia when he's playing you can get there is a section in the middle uh, i mean in in the beginning where you've got a note written by uh, uh, rabindranath shri rabindranath tagore where you can go close to the note and you can see what are the instruments being used right at the end of it you can touch the instrument you can learn more about the instrument and things like that it's a proper virtual reality thing you can see the kids up close while they're singing the anthem and that virtual reality uh, experience is over here right at the back so we have uh, we have uh, the two gentlemen over there you can just uh, see them over there they are waving their hands over there the two of them so basically go to them they've got the apple vision pro they will put it onto your head and it's about a 3 minute experience you all can experience that and you all can see a virtual reality version of this 
So I would encourage everybody to go over there and like, you know, spend a few minutes and just uh, experience it in virtual reality. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you.